Good evening, Ustream world. My name is Mike Martin. I'm the general manager of marketing at Casio. And here we are again for another live clinic on the Privia PX 5S. So this clinic is live for those of you that might be watching it on YouTube after the fact. This is the kind of thing we do often here at Casio on uh, not only the Privia PX5, but some of our other products as well. And this uh, clinic is primarily driven by the questions that we get live. So uh, for those of you that are watching live and you have the chat window open, um, or if you haven't opened it yet, there's a chat button there at the, uh, to the right of the video window, I believe. That opens up a window where you can participate, ask me questions, and again, the questions you ask drive what are, what's going to happen during this live event. Of course, I do have uh, some specific topics that we're going to cover, but uh, this is just like uh, more or less having me at your house as your own private tutor to show you how to do specific things on the PX5S. Now, we've done a couple of clinics already on this product, um, some of which got a little advanced, but we've got a lot of new users. So tonight we're going to dial it back, kind of a uh, beginner's guide, uh, PX5S 101, back to basics uh, kind of episode. Uh, we're doing some new things here as well uh, tonight. We've got uh, several new camera angles, so you know I can actually I'm hanging a webcam up from the screen and all right from the ceiling up there, so you guys can see my hands. Uh, we also have a close-up view of the display, so when I am pressing buttons that you can get a good look at what's happening here. So um, that's what's about to happen. So again, if you have questions, uh, don't hesitate uh, to go ahead and type them in. So I'm going to start um, just giving a brief tour of, of, of the front panel of the PX5S and try and get some of the, you know, the concepts that perhaps are a little different or if you're, this is you know, one of your first pro instruments, um, give, you, give you sort of the 101 on navigating the PX5S. So the PX5S is um, kind of divided into two sections. Um, the left-hand side where it says tone up on the top, I give you a view of that up close. Uh, that's the left-hand side of the keyboard. So um, that's where you know most people immediately uh, look and they see pianos, electric pianos, and they start selecting buttons there. And they may or may not, you may or may not get uh, what you're looking for. And I'll explain why. Because over on the right-hand side of the keyboard, over on this side, we have what we call stage settings. Now these are like templates, but they're the kind of thing that you would use, um, as the name implies, on stage when you're performing live. So um, there are 100 stage settings, each of which can contain either one sound or up to uh, up to four sounds at once. So um, they are organized from the factory in in groups of ten. So um, to the right of the display is a button labeled bank, and if you see right now, we're looking at stage setting 00, zero titled Concert Grand. Now the name um, that's happening here uh, could be anything. Uh, ideally, uh, when you get to performing with the PX5S, uh, you would have, um, you'd put your song title up there in the top of the screen that has um, the the relevant sounds um, or you know song title for and the sounds that you're going to need for that particular song. So that's the concept with the stage setting. Um, but the way the factory ones are organized, they're in groups of ten. And uh, this is, by the way, also outlined on our blog site, which is priviapro.wordpress.com, where you can get some information. And we'll put that in the notes um, and the links in the bottom of the video here. So um, in the, in a single bank from the factory. Uh, basically, if it ends in zero, um, so sound number 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, if it ends in zero, it's going to be a piano, uh, acoustic piano or a piano layered with something. Um, if it ends in one, it's going to be a Rhodes or electric piano type sound, and two, generally speaking, is a Rhodes or a uh, Wurlitzer. So, um, and, and you'll find that as you go through the banks, uh, so if I go to bank, bank, press the bank button, um, go to bank one, and then press zero, that I have another um, piano with a layer in this case, so more than one sound happening at once. But the concept here is that within one single bank, you'd be able to experience a little bit of everything that the PX5S has to offer. Now again, when you uh, get the PX5S home, which many of you already have, 
Uh, these are these serve as templates and templates that you shouldn't feel nervous about erasing or changing and making them your own. That's the whole point. Uh, because the other thing that happens with a stage setting is the stage setting determines the function of all the knobs and sliders. Now starting with uh, this concert grand preset, um, you'll find that um, this is how the, the knobs and sliders are arranged. My knobs up here, and when I move a knob or a controller, the display actually shows me what's happening. So knob 1 is my low EQ, knob 2 is my, I guess, low mid EQ, uh, my high mid, and knob 4 is my high gain. So anytime you move a knob or slider, pay attention to what the display is, is showing. Um, because you will get to see exactly what is happening. So, um, so with this this concert grand setting, my my knobs are EQ. My first slider um, is actually filter. We just left it um, there again to serve as a template, just in case you want to grab a different sound over here on the left. That you're going to have some control over that. Likewise, uh, we have resonance control, um, little envelope control. And then we the last three, and you'll find this in common on most of the stage settings that you'll have chorus followed by delay and followed by reverb. So you always have instant access to your system effects. So this first stage setting, again, although it says concert grand, um, you can change the name and you can put any sound you want in this stage setting. Uh, and you can simply go reach over to the left hand side and grab a tone from any of those categories. And if you look at the bottom half of the screen, you can see the tones on the left and then you can scroll through those. So if I were to grab or grab something from the synth category, you know, I've got a sound that I've got filter control over. Um, I could add some effects. Add some delay, some chorus, some reverb. So although we started with a stage setting called Concert Grand, again, that's a template. And we can um, start here and then create a combination that we might need for a particular song. So um, the other thing you need to notice about this screen is right now the, on the bottom right hand corner of the screen right here, next to my finger there, it says Zone or Z1 on. So that means Zone 1 is on and that's the sound that we're looking at here on the bottom of the display. It says Atmosphere Pad. If we wanted to add another zone and turn that on with this particular sound, uh, with this particular stage setting, just to the left of the display, um, there's Zone plus and minus buttons right here. So just if I hit the plus button, now you can see on the display I'm looking at zone 2 and it is off. So I could choose to turn that zone on by hitting plus the zone plus and minus buttons at the same time. Now zone 2 is on and now I can from the left hand side grab another ingredient. So, so I've quickly made a layer of two sounds. So again, the name at the top not necessarily relevant for what will eventually happen because again the idea is that you're going to use these things as templates to create your own stage settings for your own performances. Okay, So that's a little bit about the stage setting concept and um, as you go through these you'll find some things that are in common about the way the controllers are laid out. So when you go to create your own stage setting you might find that okay starting here gives, you know, starting with a particular stage setting gives me the controls I'm going to need. And that way you don't, you know, it saves you a step uh, for when you start creating your own sound. Likewise, a question that we get all the time is, is doing splits. Well, um, we've taken um, some of the work away, f you know, we've done some of the work for you uh, in that most of the sounds in Bank 6 are already set up to do your, your basic um, piano and bass kinds of splits if you need to do that. So um, that's a good place to go if you're going to, if you, if you need a split without having to do work, um, again, treat the stage settings as templates. Now, if you make a mistake, um, don't worry about um, erasing something. Um, all of the sounds that are, that are currently built into the PX5S can be recovered. You can load them back in and we'll talk about how to, how to download those and, and do that from um, CasioMusicForums.com. So we'll talk about loading sounds in just a moment.
All right. So um, taking a quick look at the questions, um, are the master EQ and compressor stored in the stage setting for every single one? Great, great question. So um, that uh, actually brings up a couple, uh, there's a couple answers to that question. Um, so um, the first answer is in regards to the EQ. The EQ is independent for each stage setting. So understand that a stage setting uh, can be one sound or a group of up to four sounds at once. And that master EQ controls all of those. So if I, in this case, um, starting with this concert grand stage setting, if I were to make a change to the EQ, cut my lows, boost my mids, and, you know, and get something, you know, a nice rock and roll piano, if I had another sound going on a, on a separate zone, that that EQ would would uh, potentially be um, be applied um, to both sounds or multiple sounds. Now there's there's ways around that because you can put EQs on individual sounds, but the master EQ applies to um, every every zone in a stage setting. And when you store a stage setting, that EQ is specifically for that stage setting. So when you change to another one it would have a different um, EQ setting. So, um, so each steady setting can have its own EQ. Now the master compressor by default is not used on any stage setting in the PX5S. Uh, we also set it up uh, specifically so um, if you wanted to use it that the master compressor is, all, is set up to be a, a, in fact, a global effect and it will not change as you switch stage settings. So uh, let me explain real quick. In the system settings, there's a button over here in the top left hand corner um, of the instrument. Uh, this is where you find things like your uh, MIDI, local control, um, and other preferences. And uh, this is where you can also tune the instrument, uh, adjust your, your contrast, which there we go. Might look a little better on the live broadcast that way. Um, you can also set up um, some other preferences. But down, uh, let's see. Of course, I have to remember where it is. Stage setting filter in the general section. So these, um, these filters, you'll see that most of them are turned off. And let me explain what the filter does. Uh, so for example, tempo. If the stage setting tempo filter is on, as you switch from one stage setting to another, the tempo will not change. So regardless of what tempo is stored for the arpeggiator or whatever drum patterns you might have going, if this stage setting filter is on, the, the tempo will not change. So by default, that's off. So to take that same example and apply it to our master compressor, you see that stage setting, uh, that, excuse me, that um, uh, compressor setting is on, and that means that the master compressor um, will not change as you move from, from one stage setting to another. So, um, you know, stage, the compressor, it's something in a, um, for a specific sound, or maybe there's, you know, some audio issues that you might want to limit your overall dynamic range. Uh, you might find the master compressor useful. But in general, it's something that we wanted to leave um, sort of untouched uh, for the instrument for now. And, and, you know, again, if a particular environment, it's something where you need compression, um, you can either turn it on and then adjust it for stage settings or, um, or adjust it globally. So I hope that answers your question. So, um, and again, if you're watching live, uh, please, please do type in questions. So, um, that's a little bit about the, the organization of, of uh, the stage settings. At least I've gone through a few of them. Um, and generally speaking, so I said uh, if it ends in zero, it's a, it's a piano type sound. If it ends in one, it's an electric piano. Two, it's reed. Something you'll find in common um, with a lot of the electric pianos and Wurlitzer sounds is uh, the way that we've programmed these sliders and knobs. So uh, again, with most of these, you'll find that the, the knobs up here on the top um, for most of your pianos, electric piano, and uh, Wurlitzer sounds, you'll find these knobs are set to EQ. Because most often, if you're performing live, um, it's something you're, you might need to adjust on the fly for a particular room. 
uh, for a particular mix with a particular band and you know you need to cut through a little bit uh, you can you can roll that low end off maybe do a little boost here and and um, you can adjust it uh, but another thing we've done with these electric piano sounds um, is we're taking advantage of the effects so um, you'll see slider one as I move it um, the display is actually showing two things I'm turning up the gain while turning down the level so um, each slider and knob can do two things at once so so you can actually you know dial in that amount that you're you know, that you need that amount of dirt and then the second slider allows me to choose which amplifier or speaker simulator that we're running through so so a lot of variety within each individual preset Slider 3 is actually a little bit of a tone control where we can, you know, again do a high boost or, um, or a low boost. Okay, so you can quickly and easily customize these sounds for your needs. All right, so that's the way most of the electric pianos and uh, even most of the clavs are set up. Uh, when you start, when you get to the bottom row of sounds, that's where things uh, get a little di bit different when we have things like our synth sounds, what we call hex layers. That's often where we have the sliders doing different things. In this case, the sliders are controlling the levels of each of the components that make up this particular preset. So, um, you know, one of my one of my favorites, of course, this one, which I, I believe most of you have heard before. So I can use those sliders and knobs to blend. To blend each of those components. Um, so that's the way, uh, if it ends in 7, that's typically what we call a hex layer sound. And many of them are set up, not all of them, but many of them are set up so you can use those sliders to blend different sounds. So uh, we're taking a look at the questions again, that uh, someone's having questions again about uh, the stage settings versus tones versus zones. Okay, so I'll, I'll try and explain it one more time real quick. Um, so a stage setting. Imagine a stage setting is a snapshot of things that you're going to use for a particular song. All right. Um, some companies call a stage setting a performance. Uh, some companies call it... Um, a setup or a combination even. Um, the PX5S is always in a stage setting. So uh, again, your, your stage setting here is going to determine what's going to happen. And that can be either one zone or up to four zones at one time. So um, in this case, we have zone one turned on and all we have is piano. Okay. If we want to turn on another zone, we can use that button to the left of the display and we see we have concert strings here available and if I hit both zone buttons one and two at the same time I can turn that second zone on and now I have piano and strings so the tone on zone one is lit up here on the left that's piano the tone on zone two um, actually happens to be a hex layer sound but if I want to change the sound that's on zone 2, I can choose from my tones on the left-hand side. Uh, maybe grab something from the synth category, uh, like a warm pad. So, so you immediately can create your own combination. So uh, these, um, so tones, think of them as the ingredients that are going to make up your songs. Okay, so I hope um, again that little bit uh, of additional explanation helps um, regarding the stage settings. So um, somebody's asking another question: What did the delete and insert buttons near um, the top? If you hold those down, um, those can be used. Um, uh, those are part of the song suite, song sequencer functions, and there's also. Um, uh, a couple other instances where you're inserting um, a measure or something like that. So um, 
that's what those two buttons are for. Uh, the initialize button at the top, um, if I do, if I hold down the bank button, um, I believe um, will initialize that particular stage setting. I could be wrong. I'm, in fact, I'm going to circle back to what the initialize button does. So, um, um, and I'll put that in the in the show notes after the fact. Um, so moving on to a couple other things here real quick, navigation-wise, uh, because I want to get into uh, uh, how to load and save sounds. One of the most remarkable things about the, uh, the PX5S is, like I said, you know, what's in here are these things are templates, and you can make this instrument w really whatever you want it to be. It's much more than just a digital piano. Uh, it's an extremely powerful synthesizer. Um, it's capable of a, a, a very wide array of sounds. So um, we're going to get to how to um, load those in in a minute. But I'm going to take one more question. Is there a master reset? Um, absolutely. The, um, the one way to do it, uh, if you press the system settings button over here on the left hand side, you can scroll down to um, and select initialize from the screen. And press enter. And you can in initialize an individual stage setting, an individual um, tone, an arpeggio, or down at the bottom, initialize all. And that will um, return the instrument to factory settings. But again, there's r very few instances where you're going to need to do that. Um, but uh, if you do need to um, you know, perhaps just get back to square one, uh, you can initialize it and, and get back to all the factory presets. But all the factory presets are online, and if you replace one or overwrite one that you, uh, you think you, you, know, you want back, um, you can load those in. So, uh, in fact, why don't we get to that, because uh, uh, there are so many sounds online for the PX5S. We're approaching, I don't know, well over 150 different sounds, close to 200, I believe. And um, and there's more all the time. Uh, you know, last night uh, I posted uh, per request a, a new uh, um, string sound. Which has a very different character than the ones that are built in. So, um, so to load a sound like this in, um, the, there's actually two different ways to do it. One way is to use a um, USB drive, if you're lucky enough to have one that says uh, Casio on it, um, or any just any ordinary um, drive like this, um, or use the data editor. And I'm going to show you um, actually how to use the uh, data editor first. So I'm going to pull up uh, a screen over here on the left-hand side. So this assumes, uh, first of all, that your PX5S is connected to your computer uh, via USB. So it's a standard USB cable uh, connected to your computer. Um, you do not need drivers or anything. Just plug it in. The PX5S is ready to go. Um, so plug it in and download um, from our uh, Casio.com support website. You can download the uh, data editor for the PX5S. And once you have the data editor open, um, you can see something like this. So um, the main window we're concerned with here is over on the, on the left hand side, the second button down, there's a button labeled transfer. So um, the tr on the left hand side of the screen, if you guys can read it at the top here, it says uh, PC user data files. So um, in, on a Windows computer, in your My Documents folder, you'll find a Casio folder, and inside that a, a PX5S folder, and then a data folder. So, um, and on the Mac, um, in your user section, in your library, in, yeah, your music, user music library section, you'll find a Casio folder in there as well. If you're unsure where to put the, your files that you've downloaded from online, select the Preferences button on the editor here and the location of that folder will be displayed here at the bottom and you can change that if you you know wherever you would like to um, store your folder your, your sounds in your computer once you've downloaded them so um, if so you download the sounds off of the web um, you put them in that folder 
and any sounds you've downloaded appear on the list on the left hand side of the screen. On the right hand side of the screen are all of the stage settings that I currently have loaded in my PX5S. So at the top of the screen I can choose what specifically I'm loading in, be it a stage setting or an individual tone. So all of those things are available to me to choose from and we do have a variety of different either you know, more complex stage settings or individual sounds to choose from on the web. So again, stage setting might often contain specific controller assignments for our sound um, as compared to an individual tone. So um, just uh, for giggles here, I'm going to, from the left of the screen, grab uh, a particular stage setting. And I'm going to load it in here real quick. So all you have to do um, is grab the, the name on the left and drag it over to the right. And it's going to ask if you'd like to replace that particular sound that's in that location. And again, don't worry about replacing a, um, a factory one. Uh, because, uh, again, all the factory ones are also available online for you to, um, to load in. So click yes. And the reason it was asking do I want to say yes to all is because, well, you can actually drag over groups of them at once. Um, and so now that you've, um, you've loaded that sound in, um, it appears there on the screen. So now I have... Uh, you know, So again, there's a lot of content up there that that um, goes in many different directions beyond um, the factory presets. And what's great is a lot of users um, like yourselves, uh, as they make settings for particular songs and styles, um, you know, Casio, we're not the only ones uploading. You guys are sharing the things that you're doing for your live performances up there, and there's so much to choose from. So do check out those sounds. They are at casiomusicforums.com, so very easy to, to get to those. Um, so just drag and drop them. Um, if you've created a sound on your PX5S and you want to save it to your computer or perhaps share it with the other guys on the forum, um, the, just do the opposite. Take the sound that, uh, that you've made on your PX5S and then just drag it to the left-hand side and you can store that. So very easy to back up your work, very easy to share sounds and, and explore uh, the many libraries of sounds that are available for the PX5S. Now, if you do have a handy USB thumb drive, uh, maybe you're on the gig and you said, oh, you know, I wanted to use a different sound, uh, I want to try a different sound tonight, and you don't have your computer, well, that's, how you, that's when you can use, again, a USB thumb drive. Um, so, uh, to, in order to do that, let's just take a look again at uh, how that's done. Over on the right-hand side, uh, there is a button labeled uh, two things, actually. It is labeled um, Audio Recorder, and below that it says Media. Okay, so, um, and next to Media, it has a little arrow uh, pointing down, and that arrow pointing down means, well, hold that button down for a couple seconds. That's what it means. So anytime you see that little abbreviation on a Casio product, uh, that means hold it down and that will uh, bring up another menu. So that button has two purposes. So now that we're on the, the media page, um, here's where we have a couple options. The first one, our second one here on the list being load. And again, I can load a, a stage setting or an individual tone, uh, phrases, all kinds of things that I can load. I have actually no idea what's on here, but uh, here we've got uh, one sound, Mike's grand. So, um, so here's here's uh, the procedure. You got to pay attention a little bit here. At the top of the screen in the right-hand corner, there is a zero in a bracket. Uh, apparently, I only have one file on on the drive right now. If if I were to use the plus and minus buttons, if there were other files here, um, we'd be able to scroll through this list. Um, then using the cursor down buttons, you see now I have selected, there's a little equals or a little arrow pointing in, it says 0 0. If I were to press enter right now, that's where this particular sound would go. It'd go into that location number. 
So you have to have an idea of, you know, okay, what sound am I going to replace? What location am I going to replace? Uh, so you might have to exit out and say, okay, uh, you know, do I want to swap out the piano that's at 80 or, um, you know, which sound am I not using right now and so I can replace it. So I'm, I'm not using 87. So um, again, all of these things are just templates. No worries about um, um, erasing or destroying anything because you can you can load those back in. So uh, another big tip here is you don't have to press this button so many times to get up to 87. Grab knob 2 and you can turn knob 2. Knob 2 always serves as sort of a data entry knob and you can dial in that uh, selection where you want that sound to go. Press enter and again it's asking me one more time do you want to replace that and you say oops yes. <laughs> now it's telling me wrong data because guess what? The sound that's on that USB drive was done with version 1 and I'm running our latest firmware. So, um, so much for that good example, but that's how you would load it in. So, um, uh, somebody's asking on the forum that I should put my library of stage settings on the forum. Um, I guarantee you guys that just about every sound that I've ever made uh, for this product is on the forum already, including uh, the Transgate sound that I was just playing seconds ago. Um, where did I have that guy? In 97. Um, that one is most definitely on the forum as well. In fact, there's two versions of this particular uh, sound. One with piano um, sort of stacked in there as well, which uh, if I were to quickly make it just, you know, turning on another zone and selecting piano. Uh, oops. Um, I'll show you how to turn off the arpeggiator for that particular zone, too. So I'd already done a lot of this work. Oops, that's in the controller section. Sorry, it's been a little while for me. There we go. Arpeggiator for zone 4 is now off. So. So since I did that quickly, I'll show you how to turn on and off the arpeggiator for different zones. So um, let's uh, go back to where I started and I'll show you what happened and why it happened. All right, so here's this particular sound. If I um, do what I did before, I went to zone four, I turned it on and selected piano and my arp piano is also being arpeggiated. So in order to uh, fix that, over on the left hand side on the arpeggiator button, if I hold down that arpeggiator button, you will see the on off switch for this particular zone. So it says arpeggiator select zone four, zone on. So if I turn that off, turn on and off the arpeggiator for each part individually. So we're jumping around a little bit, um, but yeah, there are uh, lots of sounds online for you to choose from. Um, that's just one of them. So uh, next question, which is uh, actually one of my favorite features on the PX5S, is how to uh, record audio. So again, if you have a USB thumb drive, I, I think it's a great idea just to keep one plugged into the PX5S at all times. Um, because you never know when you know that moment of inspiration is going to happen. So um, you know, keep keep a drive plugged in there, and um, it's just a couple steps, and you can record your own WAV file on the fly, capture that moment. So um, to do that, again, just plug in that USB drive, press that audio record button two times. So one time, and then the second time. And you see it says audio standby and it's just waiting to record um, a file called take one. So um, as you record files onto the USB drive it will just keep numbering them take two, take three, take four. But all I have to do at this point is play. So <laughs> So without hooking up audio gear, without hooking up a computer and launching a program, um, all I do now is hit the record button over here on the left, 
and it has recorded that file. I can hit the start button now. Ooh, boy. And uh, I think this is a drive that I should have thrown out um, before. And that's still lingering on my desk. So um, make sure you've got a good USB thumb drive available. So let's take a look and see if we can fix this. This is live, folks. <laughs> And let's see if we can format our drive. Or better yet, I'll tell you what, I'm going to grab a different one. So while I'm fumbling over here on the left hand side trying to grab myself a good USB thumb drive, I'll let you guys have some more questions for me. And so let's try this again. Plug in a new drive. Dun dun dun. See, it does happen to everybody. Record standby. So we've made a recording. Hit the record button to stop. And now we hit the start button and we should hopefully. There we go. So uh, very easy to record your, um, your audio recordings at that moment of inspiration. Uh, you can, by the way, use audio files as backing tracks. Um, so uh, at any point in time, if you just hit that audio record button one time, you can select from the files that are on your USB drive and hit the start button and begin recording or begin playing back that audio file. Okay, so uh, Piano Man Chuck's got a question. Will plugging in the MIDI out cable into the computer fix the, f the finale has with high definition MIDI? Um, you know, um, the PX5S has, um, along with other Privia models, utilizes a uh, technology called high, high definition MIDI or high definition MIDI velocity specifically. Uh, what most keyboards do um, when you're playing uh, the piano, it records uh, 128 steps of velocity from 0 up to, to, to 127, actually. Um, the Privia models, current models, take that um, several steps further. Um, this uh, specification from the MIDI Manufacturers Association um, was first implemented here in the um, previous series, the PX150, 350, and PX5S. And instead of 128 different values of MIDI of velocity, uh, the PX5S sends 16,256 notes or, or moments of resolution. So um, your performance is, is captured with incredible definition. Now there are some uh, software applications that um, don't seem to want to pay attention to the, the, the specification that was established by the MIDI Manufacturers Association. And Finale, unfortunately, is one of them um, that has not updated their program for this specification. Um, you do not need on a PX5S to, um, to hook up a standard MIDI out to, um, to work. On the PX5S, you can go, uh, go to System Settings, select MIDI, and you will find a high resolution out on off switch. So you can turn the high resolution MIDI off and the PX5S will just stand, just send those um, um, standard 128 values of velocity. So um, we're aware of two programs currently that have um, issues with high resolution MIDI. One um, is Finale, and the other is, um, unfortunately, uh, PreSonus' Studio One. So if you're using that program, um, turn off your high-resolution MIDI, and you'll work perfectly with um, uh, any of those software applications. Okay, so thank you for the question about that. Let's move on to a few other basics, because we've got... Um, Again, some new, user, new users here that uh, perhaps you know haven't done some of the uh, configurations that we're doing here tonight with uh, some of these more complex sounds. So let me go back to um, for the variation I made on this warm string setting really quick.
So um, in the version you download from um, CasioMusicForums.com, Zone 2 is turned off. Um, I saved it this evening before we started with Zone 2 turned on. Um, and it's just uh, that the Dolce Piano, um, which uh, I think all of you may have heard. It's just a gorgeous, nice, mellow uh, electric piano. Um, So um, I go back to zone one and turn it on. So I've got you know piano. So one thing you know, common question: How do we change the the volume levels between these two sounds? So um, by default, my sliders are, are are doing my sliders knobs over here with this particular sound. They're doing other things. So I'm going to cover two things. Number one: How do you change the um, the volume levels of these sounds, and secondly, well, how would we assign the knobs or the sliders to allow me to control this live? All right, so um, let's cover those two things. So first of all, uh, we're going to hit the edit button, and we're going to edit the stage setting. Um, then we're going to edit the zone, and then the mixer. So at the top of the screen, it says Z1, meaning zone 1. And you can see below that, we've got my warm strings tone here selected. We can scroll down further. We have things like the key range, low and high, its velocity range, all of those things. Um, so on, if you look at the top right-hand corner of the screen, it says 3 slash 6. So this is page 3. This is where we have our volume and our pan position of this particular string sound. So remember knob 2 is always data entry. I can adjust the volume of my strings here until I get the balance perhaps that I want with the piano. Okay, and that sounds just about right. So um, you can adjust your volume, your pan position for all of your zones because while I'm on this screen to the left of the screen, we've got those zone plus and minus buttons. So hit the plus button. Now I'm looking at zone two, and that's my piano. So, so I can change um, its rel its volume in comparison uh, to the pianos, and I can do that with zone three and zone four, which are currently off. So that's how you would make that adjustment um, if you were wanted to make a split. Uh, maybe I only want my piano in the top half of the keyboard just as an example. Um, we can do that pretty easily. Uh, there's a couple different ways. Again, I could highlight that parameter and use knob 2 and choose what split point that I w want. I could also, um, there's a number key up here in the top right hand corner of the keyboard. Press that number key button and then play the key that I want on the keyboard. So now I've chosen that uh, A flat number 3. But down here, I just have um, strings down here in the bottom of the keyboard. So um, that's how you would create your own split um, for a, a sound within a stage setting or in a specific zone. All right. So the other thing I wanted to show you was, well, how do we assign knobs or sliders to, to do this? Because maybe on the fly, I would like to make a change with this particular sound. So um, a couple different ways. So um, I, by the way, I just reselected um, the stage setting. So I'm back to, to where I started. So we're going to edit and select stage setting. My sliders and knobs, those are in the common section. So it's on the second page here, which by the way, you don't have to scroll down four times to get to the second page. And this is um, you'll find this throughout the PX5S. If I just hit the cursor right button one time, that takes me to the second page much faster. So um, anytime there's multiple pages of parameters, you don't have to press that down button so many times. You can also use knob 1 to scroll between pages. All right, so knob 1 goes up and down through the list. Knob 2 is my data entry within that list. So common edit, this is where we're going to find things like um, our arpeggiator and here our knob and slider assignments. They're all listed here. All right, so um, uh, slider one, 
I think currently is set to cut off, but let's 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 go ahead and make um, a change here. So um, we press enter, and we're looking at the screens here. It says slider one is um, the target. That means what is this slider going to control? Um, cut off is often referred to as brightness. Um, that's our filter, and that will. Um, if you open the filter, the sound's going to get brighter. If you close it, the sound's going to get darker. Depending now, it does depend a little bit on the type of filter being used, but generally speaking, we can assign this um, to do a variety of different things. So, um, if I were, as an example, um, I can scroll through the list, assign the slider one to be volume, and I'm going to go ahead and just set my minimum value to zero and my maximum value to 127. Um, that would, oh, well, let's see what it does. So, so what's happening here is I'm controlling the volume of the strings. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind is um, it may control other sounds on other zones depending on um, a different parameter, how a different parameter is set. So let's take a look at that really quick. If I go into stage settings and go into zone edits, there's a section here called controller edit. edit. And this is really important. So if for zone one, we're looking at the top of the screen, here's my on and off switches for all the knobs and sliders. So that means if, if that switch is turned on, that means that zone will respond to that slider. Okay, so zone one, as we heard, is responding to the volume parameter. If I switch to zone two, guess what? Slider one is turned off. Okay, so um, you might find that you know you make a slider assignment and you, and, uh, you realize, hey, that's controlling that's controlling both my piano and my strings. Well, you know, I don't want it to do that. So to get there again, that's zone edit and then controllers. So each zone has its own on and off switches for each of those controllers because you may want to change maybe the attack um, of those strings. Maybe you want the strings to be really, really slow, um, nice. But of course I wouldn't want my piano to fade in. So um, that's how you can configure those sliders for each and every zone. So there, um, there are, there's so much flexibility with these knobs and sliders. Um, I'll just give you one more uh, quick example of something that we can do. Um, and again, I'm, I'm not going to write my changes that I just made. I'm, I'm going to reselect this stage setting and get back to where I started. Um, so, so slider one is back to just a little bit of that filter tone control that I had set up. Okay, so um, maybe I have another foot switch connected, and the PX5S has two pedal inputs here on the back. Sorry, I moved the camera there. Two pedal inputs on the back, and maybe I wanted to use the um, second foot switch to do maybe a volume swell on those on those strings. So let's uh, let's uh, set that up real quick, and I'll show you how to do that. So um, I'm going to press the edit button, and again, if I want to make a pedal, a knob, or a slider, a wheel, do something, that is in the common section of a stage, of a stage edit. Uh, now, keep in mind, I, I personally um, work most of the time on the front panel of the PX5S. Um, visually, uh, obviously, the editor over here gives you a lot more information. Um, that you can do all of the things that I'm doing um, using the editor. So um, for a lot of people, just to get their head wrapped around the architecture, that might be the easiest way. Um, when I started working with the PX5S, there was not an editor. So um, I just found um, this was the fastest way and remains the fastest way for me to work. And uh, I just generally find that's, you know, for a variety of instruments, that's the way I prefer. It's a little bit more immediate for me. Um, so common edit. Pedal 2 is where I was headed, and I want to make Pedal 2 do something. Okay, so Pedal 2, I and instead of Soft Pedal, I'm going to assign it uh, to, 
And you know what, we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to assign it to volume with a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 127. That's going to get very interesting. So um, exit back out of here and so what happens when I stepped on that pedal too? It got really loud and then it turned off those strings. So anytime I step that pedal, sorry I don't have a, a pedal cam for this clinic, but anytime I step on that pedal, the strings come in. But it's, it's functioning like an on-off switch. So one of the cool things we can do with our pedals is set up a rate for that parameter. So I'm going to go back into pedal 2 and there you'll see on here um, before I could choose target, um, we have an on rate and off rate. So uh, the higher number, the faster it is. Kind of the opposite of other parts of the product. I get it. Um, so Okay, the other thing we're noticing, uh, my pedal target for zone 2 must be on. So let's go to controller edit for zone 2 and turn pedal 2 off. So now we should have piano and then be able to fade in those strings. So there's so many musical applications for this. Of course, we wouldn't, you know, we don't necessarily always want it to fade all the way down to zero. You can set for any of these things um, again the minimum and maximum range. And so, uh, stage setting, common edit, pedal two edit. Here's our minimum value: how how low it goes when the pedal is off, and how loud it will go when the pedal is on. So. Um, now, again, I don't want your... See, that's much nicer. The strings just back down a little bit, and we can do swells with that foot switch. Um, if this is becoming um, a lot for you, don't, don't worry. Um, hook up a second pedal. You're actually going to find things like this already done for you. Remember I said that the stage settings that are built in here serve as templates. So here is another example where um, something like this already happens. Uh, stage setting 03 uh, which is a, a piano uh, with a really nice uh, synth pad in the background. Pedal 2 does a nice filter swell. So if you don't have uh, a second pedal hooked up to it, I would recommend that you you find a pedal um, and a, you know a second foot switch and plug it into the back. One thing to remember about a PX5S, if you're a new user, uh, the PX5S will work with um, pretty much any ordinary foot switch. Just plug it in before you plug in the uh, before you turn the unit on, um, and the PX5S will automatically detect the pe the polarity of that pedal and work. So um, if you have found that um, you, know, you plugged in a pedal it's not working properly, make sure that pedal is plugged in before you turn the keyboard on. Uh, and that should, that should resolve things for you. Alright, so um, that's a little bit about slider assignments and those on-off switches for each zone. So again, if you want um, control over one sound, um, that's how you would do it with those on-off switches for each zone. So even on um, Dun, 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 dun. The editor, if you were to look quickly at the editor, you'll find that um, in addition to the knob, uh, the knob assignments, you can get into each zone and you will find those on-off switches for each zone. And here they are. There's your enable switches for each zone on and off. So you can do it from either uh, the front panel or the um, the editor, of course. 
Uh, somebody is posting on the forum, sometimes your pedal is not recognized, you have to restart. Uh, that's the sign of not a good pedal. Um, you might have a, um, a short in your foot switch up sometimes, so um, you might want to look into another um, editor. Uh, someone's asking, where do you download the editor again? Uh, of course, you can find it on Casio.com uh, in the support section. Um, and there's actually, it's actually several pages deep. I have to, at this point, thank one of our great users, um, Scott Hamlin, who set up a website called px-5s.com. And here he's provided links to uh, just about everything you would need to know um, for about the PX5S, links to the firmware updates, links to the editors, links to the forums, the sounds, uh, videos like this one that uh, if you're not watching it live, you're watching it on YouTube. He's got most of those things uh, linked there on px-5s.com. And so thank you, Scott, uh, for doing that. And also, if you found this video and you haven't found um, the Facebook users group, um, Scott also uh, was the founder of this group and has invited over 400 people so far where um, you can uh, you know, join in uh, the discussion, which is extremely active. And... Uh, uh, I'm there as often as possible. So uh, do join the, the Facebook users group. If you search for PX5S or Casio, uh, you'll likely find it on Facebook. Yeah, you can't put the links in on the chat window. So um, uh, where does the editor install? Uh, you know what, the editor, um, if you download the editor on, your, uh, on a Windows computer, the editor will just live in whatever folder um, you you put it in. So if, uh, you know, I downloaded it and I put it on my desktop, and that's where the program runs for. Of course, I could I could put a shortcut anyplace else on my desktop or uh, things like that, but um, it doesn't actually um, install into the programs list of of uh, a Windows computer. It just runs right off the desktop. So that's uh, that's where it goes. So I'm uh, glad glad to answer that. All right, so uh, we're approaching about the one hour mark, so I'm going to be wrapping things up, unless you guys have some additional questions. A um, um, couple other just uh, things of note, uh, if you didn't know already, over here on the right-hand side, I actually have a, a sign that you're going to see in stores over here on covering up uh, the battery compartment on mine. Um, but uh, this that's what this little door is over here. You can plug in batteries. Great thing if you're performing live that um, you don't have to worry about the guitarist tripping over that power cable and that um, you know you'll always have a uh, good good power there. Um, one question can we have a before and after in the editor in future updates? Um, great question. Um, I, I can't you know people ask can we're we gonna have this feature or are we gonna have that feature? I can't I can't you know um, of course I have a wish list too. Um, but no air updates are guaranteed, uh, you know, and I can't talk about, you know, the, the future and what we're working on next. So um, I would like an undo and a compare and things like that. Currently there isn't one, but it is, you know, it's a great future feature request. And maybe one day we'll be able to implement that. Uh, and, you know, same about uh, the next question, which is, are there going to be more firmware updates? Uh, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that right now. Um, you know, uh, at at a certain point, uh, every company has to begin working on um, other things, and and uh, uh, you know, we've been very lucky so far. There's been three pretty significant updates so far with the PX5S. I have my fingers crossed for more, and uh, you know, we've we've been taking the the requests that are on the users groups and the forums uh, very much into consideration. So um, keep your fingers crossed. I know mine are, and we'll see. So um, great question. So uh, yeah, with each of the, you know we're currently on version 1.11 for the PX5S, um, and uh, I think there's going to be one more which addresses um, uh, a specific um, one specific thing. But as far as major major uh, bugs or major feature changes, I'm not so certain yet. So again, fingers crossed. So um, so that's uh, a little bit about. Um, uh, the um, users groups, the resources that are online, the editor, where you grab that. Lettering for the front of the PX5S keyboard. Great question. Okay, so um, if you're in the United States or Canada um, and you have gone, to, um, there was a sticker on your box. Um, if, and if you threw away the box, you missed it. Um, I will get this link posted um, also in the... Um, 
the notes uh, that will go into the YouTube video description. Um, there's a link where you can register for an extended warranty on your PX5S. Um, make sure you've done so. Um, that extends your warranty to a total of three years. Um, if your name is on that list, I'm going to have to step away from the camera real quick. Hold on one second. If your name is on that list, I'll be send sending you one of these. And it's a nice translucent sticker that you peel off the back of it um, and you can stick it um, on your laptop or, and of course, on the back of your PX5S. So um, we're going to print out that user registration list um, very soon and uh, maybe get those out before in the mail before Thanksgiving. So make sure you have registered um, on the, the extended warranty website for your PX5S. So, all right. So um, that's it for today's clinic. We've already done two more, so this is the first one you've seen. Um, do check out um, on our YouTube page the other videos um, which go into other aspects of the PX5S. And, you know, don't forget that, um, you know, these are the kinds of things that we do on a regular basis here at Casio. Uh, which I think makes us quite a bit different than some other companies. And we certainly appreciate all of you that have joined in tonight um, and that support the PX5S. So um, um, somebody saying, hey, I have registered. If you've registered, then uh, uh, then you will get one. But uh, for those of you that haven't, do, do register soon, okay? Um, anyway, lost my train of thought. Thanks for watching the videos. Do check out the other videos if, if you've missed Clinics 1 and 2 online. Um, check those out as well. And I hope to see you guys on the Facebook users group and the, the forums as well. Don't forget about all those hundreds of downloadable sounds that you can load in. Hopefully tonight that helped you uh, getting those sounds in and out of your keyboard. So um, that is it for me. Again, my name is Mike Martin. I'm with Casio, and you guys have a good evening.